All right, welcome back. Okay, so this is Brandon again. Now we're on part five of the series, and let me go ahead and talk about this right now. So you've gone a long way. You've learned how to do things like create um, list tables. You've learned how to do the formatting of a page at this stage. You've seen how to go ahead and take text and format it in special sorts of ways. And all of this is extremely helpful and important. In fact, it's the fundamentals. All right, now what you're going to do is you're going to take that and you're going to go ahead and extend it. You're going to start going into column charts and things like that, and you're going to begin to see, okay, how do I lay out a chart appropriately? How do I get a chart to work? Um, and why do I lay out a chart in this sort of way? That's what I'm going to be looking for. And we're, we really got a really a four-part series, essentially, where we get up to building KPIs. And at the end of that, I would say that plus, you know, parameters, you'd be ready to build a very impressive report. So this is going to be a pretty good section. Um, hang with me, guys. Remember, these videos are best viewed in 1920 by 1080 resolution because that's what I'm recording in. So that way it doesn't appear too small on your screen. And it's been a big pleasure. Look forward to our next series. So now it's time to start the column chart. Okay. Excellent. Here we go. So, all right. A lot of... <clears throat> sorry about that, guys. My voice. On a lot of the things that I've said on the earlier modules, I'm not going to repeat them over here as much just because we've already set them inside of the earlier sections of this particular um, series that you guys can see in the playlist. But starting out, remember again, we're going to go ahead and launch a new report from SharePoint 2013. And you could have done this from SharePoint 2010, even SharePoint 2007. But SharePoint 2010 um, most likely would have been the SharePoint I'd recommend for if you're going to do it this way. And I'm going to launch a report, build a report. And you guys can also see something else too. Um, you don't have to just have SharePoint to make these tutorials work. These tutorials will work in, in, in any sort of report builder. So please keep that in mind also as we begin to continue. I showed the example in SharePoint 2013. And that's because I'm going to further these BI series, or I'm going to further these series essentially with more SharePoint 2013 business intelligence and also dynamics examples later on. But there were several other places where you could have had it. Okay, so here we go. We're launching Report Builder just like this is common. And I just launched a new document, and then I brought in the Report Builder type. I explained that earlier, why I did it that way and what I did. <clears throat> and we start to let that go ahead and get launched. And then I also explained to everyone too that all, um, one of the things I did was I wanted these tutorials to be repeatable. By repeatable, I mean I wanted actual labs someone could do. And as a Microsoft certified trainer, one of the things that I oftentimes see is people just not knowing what's out there. You know, there's so much out there for free. These are tutorials that Microsoft work makes and they're great. Yeah, they have a couple of errors, little small ones, but not many. Um, and, you know, adding an instructor touch to them, these are very beneficial. So what I did was I took these tutorials for you to go back and do after, you know, after you're done watching the video. And I've basically <clears throat> added an instructor touch to them where I've had bunches of, you know, explanations and things like that. And basically, I teach it very much like I teach a class, the class that would cost typically around $3,000 per person to take for a five-day period. So you guys are seeing a, a pretty much the same thing at no cost at all and just to kind of see what's out there. That's the real reason why I did it. All right, now, here we go. So we got Chart Wizard, and I'm very looking forward to this one. This is a nice little demo over here. We're going to make a chart and just see how it works. So first thing we do is we start with this Chart Wizard. Um, we start with this Chart Wizard option because this is what we use to essentially walk us through the process of getting a chart up. And of course, charts are very important, right? Because graphics mean a million words, and they can save lots and lots of space. And as I told you guys on the first lecture, it's all about saving space. So I click Next. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, new data source. At this stage again, I'm going to click New, and I explained earlier that we really didn't have to have the AdventureWorks database for this one because, because we have a special type of unrealistic query that essentially provides all the data, but this is still, you know, this is still a good practice to do because you'll need it anyway for other types of, either other types of demos or for the real world when you actually connect to a database. So there's AdventureWorks data source. I'll just call it AdventureWorks DS in this case. Then I'm going to come down to Build right over here, just as we've done a million different times, and I tell it the server to go to. And I explained what a data source was in earlier ones. So if you're seeing this now, and you're like, what's a data source? Um, go to the earlier ones where I, where I talk about what it basically means in, in, in my own terms, just the text we use to actually you know, tell SQL Server where the, where the database server is, the username and password to use, um, and the database we're going to use. Okay? Then I came in and I added his Windows credentials. I explained this earlier, too. At the moment, I have been extremely packed with work because I have to take certifications three this week, in fact. Um, and because of that, have not had time to finish up my, finish configuring my machine, which is what I wanted to do. So I'll get that done later when I get through all these certifications. So there we go over here. So brandondemos.com, BI man, there we go. And that's just because Microsoft certified um, trainers have to, have to um, maintain certification in order to be able to teach. 
So now I'm going to click Next over here. <clears throat> now I'm going to go edit this text. And I showed you guys, you know, over here we've been doing this successfully for every single query. Um, here they've got the embedded queries. Very, very brilliant concept, though, for being able to make sure people could follow along the labs, essentially, with just a report builder. So there's the query over here. And I'm going to copy it. Whoops. Just copy over here. There we go. And yes, I'll allow access. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to paste this inside of the data set. And remember what the data set was? Um, initially, it appears as just the columns, right? And we call those fields. Later on, it becomes the set of data once we actually run the report that the report's actually using. So again, that was explained a lot earlier, so I won't harp on it. But here's a set of data that generally has two columns, sales date and then sales right over there. So again, nothing new over here, how to connect to a data source. So that's the first part. Now, this is where we start to get into some interesting new options that we haven't seen before. First, right off the bat, what kind of chart do we want to add? Well, column chart's going to be our very first type with those little bars that are sticking together. And we did see a pie chart a little bit earlier, but this is our first time seeing the column chart. So let's see what these little horizontal bars that stack together look like. Very effective, by the way. There we go. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead, after we choose our type of chart, and we're going to go ahead and decide what's going to be inside the categories and what's going to be inside the values. Now, if you had to think of it, values are going to determine how high your column charts go, right? They go on the y-axis, vertical. Um, categories are going to determine the x-axis, right, for what's actually being classified. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to put sales date on the categories. And I'm going to drag sales to the actual values. Then, once I get over there, I'm going to get the option to actually choose a style. So you guys can see over there, it's going to be taking, you know, for every single date, we're going to see the sales stacked in some sort of bar to give us a picture of, you know, sales by, sales by date. Okay, now, then, I'm going to go ahead and choose a style. Now, where it says choose a style over here, um, when you guys see select a style, um, all the authors said was just go ahead and select any particular style. I'm going to use Ocean since, since that's what they selected clearly for the report. Um, and then I'm going to click Finish. All right, and now I get a preview of the report, so let me run the report. And it'll start up in just a second here. Let it run in just a moment. Just a second, take just a moment here to start running. And when it does, you guys will see it in just a second. There we go. There we go, so getting this, getting this going at the moment. And what you guys will see is this is the current report. Well, that's not really too friendly at the moment. If you can notice this over here, in fact, it looks pretty looks pretty bad <laughs> at the moment um, but we see our dates those are our date um, those are our dates over there uh, we can slightly see um, the actual the actual bars it would probably be better if we could actually make this thing you know look better so uh, let's do that right now okay so let's start over here first clicking on run again and let's start working on this from our design view right over here all right now we're gonna start at the horizontal axis so to get to the horizontal axis what you do is you come over here and you actually, what you do over here is you come over here and you actually click right there, click inside and click twice. You gotta click twice to where it gets right in here, just like that. And then you guys see over here, that's our horizontal axis, which has got sales date, right? That's what we used as our categories. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is probably get rid of that ugly formatting, because that ugly formatting was just messing things up, um, where it was showing the date and the time. Why not just show a date? So just like we've done in earlier modules, there are a couple ways to do this, right? One of the easier ways is just, well, actually, there's 10 ways to do it probably, but still. Um, one of the easier ways is to come up here, go down to date, and then click date, and then go down to the placeholder right over here. And you guys see there's the placeholder, and we can choose the type of date right over here. So like first 31st, 2000, whatever else, you name it. Um, what we could do is come down, and if we want to, we could give it, like, for example, 31st January of 2000, like it wanted us to do. So I'm going to come down, come down, come down, come down, come down, come down, and there we go. There's that format. It's going to contain, it's going to contain the, um, the, the day of the month, the month, and then, and then comma, and then the year, and I click OK. Okay, so that's going to format that. That's going to format that differently. Now, let me show you one more option they brought up. Whenever you click on this and you see it highlighted, you could have right-clicked over here, and you could have clicked on horizontal axis properties right over there. And then what you could have done was you could have went in a number this sort of way and did the exact same thing. So you had two different ways that you could have done this um, that are right there. And this is very, very helpful. In fact, both of them are. 
um, depending upon what you want to do. In formatting number, we've been doing it the other way. Here's another way to do it. And as you guys can see, you've got other things you can do too, like add tick marks and labels and all other kinds of stuff. So all those options are over there. All right, now, once we finish on that part, once we actually get that down, here comes the next part. Um, what we need to do is probably change that, right, and actually rotate the axes. Now, the reason why we rotate the axes, if I can go ahead and explain, is because right now this is a little bit too, oh, this is too cluttered at the moment. Wouldn't it be nice if we had them displayed vertically or something like that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off this first. And I'm looking at my horizontal axis and thinking about rotating it. But before I even do that, let me make this just a little bit bigger so that you guys can, everyone can see this clearly on the demos too. I'm going to make it big just for demo bait so that everyone can see it. There we go. And the real purpose of doing this is just so we can see it here. But in real life, though, we would actually resize it depending upon whatever we need it, you know, and do things like that. Power view, we could dynamically expand it um, or let our users dynamically expand it. So here we go over here. Now I've got that a little bit bigger. Okay. Now what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to click on the horizontal axes again. Now the horizontal axes is this part right over here where those actual labels appear. The sales date, the sales date, the sales date. That's where it is. It's not this bottom part, which is the title. It's this part right over here. So the sales date right over there is the horizontal axes. And I'm going to right click on it now. Now I'm going to left click on horizontal axes properties. Okay. Now once I'm on horizontal axes properties, let me show you how these actually work. What I'm going to do first is what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come down and I'm going to stay inside of the axes options, okay? So the axes options are how I'm going to define how this axis actually, you know, how this actually is actually lays out or whatever else and also too and also too which dates to display. See, a lot of times in these bar charts, you don't want to display every single value, maybe every third value, every fifth value, every tenth value, right? Because those because those because the 